Hello everyone. So in my last video, I talked about uh, the interview question for the technical support engineer role. That was the technical round. In this video, I'll be talking about the techno managerial rounds interview question. This was round two for the same candidate. He has three years of experience and he gave interview for the support specialist role. We call them with different different names, but it's kind of technical support engineer role where you will be working on customers cases. And there are certain expectation from this role is that you should know how to interact with client. You should be dealing with a lot of clients and cases. You'll be solving their problems. So a couple of expectation from companies that you will be good in debugging. You should you should enjoy solving the problem. You should know how to solve the problem. You should not be afraid of problem. They like those candidates who are not afraid of problem because many times when people contact Salesforce support, they have tried almost everything on their own end. So most of the problems are difficult problems and if you are not somebody who is afraid of those problems easily, it will it will be good for you. Okay, so they expect these kind of basic things from every candidate. After the initial introduction part, the first question was related to a couple of uh, uh, communication related question. How do you interact with your client? How do you decide the story pointing in your story? How the agile is working in your current project? How does your client gives your requirement? And then how do you solve those problems? How do you decide which tool to use? A couple of communication related um, questions how interacting with clients. And then, uh, then there was a straight question they asked, how do you solve a problem? How, how do you handle a client which is very angry because of some salesforce related issue their critical work is getting impacted you are not aware about the issue you are on call with client and he is very angry with salesforce service and you know saying bad things about it how you will handle such kind of client so in in questions like this there is no yes or uh, right or wrong answer you have to obviously be empathetic empathetic about the customer and you will have to have the understanding of the severity of the problem if they are facing a severe issue with salesforce you will have to um, kind of show that uh, courage that yes you you will be doing your best to solve the problem you will try your best to solve the problem sometimes it's not only about solving problem but understanding the customers issues or at least listening their problems so you'll have to use all the things you have in your bucket to make sure that you calm down your customers and do everything in your capacity to solve the problem okay uh, then there was a technical question on what is cpu timeout how do you resolve cpu timeout okay so every time you get a CPU timeout issue, more than resolving it, the first step of CPU timeout is to identify the problem, like why you are getting CPU timeout. So try to answer it in a way that you first got the problem, you then try to find the, the root cause of the problem and then try to solve it. I have a very good video on CPU timeout. I am going to attach it on the, on the description as well as first in uh, pinned comment and you can go through that if you want to know more about it. And then uh, there, there was a question on what is the uh, difference between uh, synchronous and asynchronous, which was also a question on the first round. And this time they asked why we have more limits for asynchronous apex than synchronous apex. The, the logic is simple because in the asynchronous apex, we are not waiting for something to be executed at the same time. We are not waiting for some results. So Salesforce resources are free to be used. Like whenever resources will be available, then only those kind of processing will execute. That is why Salesforce has given us more, um, more limits in asynchronous apex. But it also has a disadvantage that if you need something immediately and you're waiting for the result of it, then you will not be able to get that. Okay. So you are using asynchronous apex knowing the fact that it might not execute immediately. So that's a kind of bargain you'll have to do whenever you use the asynchronous apex, whether uh, you need something immediately or not. And based on that, you will decide whether you want to get additional uh, governor limits or you want to stick to the synchronous part of it. Then there was a question on how to debug error. How do you generally debug an error? And uh, see, because of the role they have, this kind of questions will be almost in every interview. How, what is your approach to solve a particular problem? The moment you got a problem, what do you do? 
so obviously when we get a problem we try to see where we are getting it we'll exactly go to that code base or the flow or the error we'll try to see where we are getting it sometimes these are easily understandable with the code type of errors we are getting uh, then it becomes easy for us to identify sometimes we get very generic errors where it is very difficult for us to identify the root problem or root cause of it then it becomes very difficult we kind of try to set the debug log we try to set the checkpoints in our code to see if there is something wrong with the value we try to go to navigate to the debug uh, debug log we sometimes use prospective managers to do and check the stack trace or execution tree or the time order everything we have in our uh, uh, in our limit to check in the prospective manager debug log error log or the uh, there is something called a replay uh, uh, replay debugger as well we can debug it in the vs code we try to use everything to identify the root cause of it but going through the debug log is the uh, easiest option but you need not to go through every line of debug log try to use prospective manager as much as you can to identify the root cause of the problem okay different types of logs in salesforce so here he wanted to understand the kind of logs we have different types of entity types available when we set the debug log different types of flag available uh, different kinds of uh, uh, information we get like information error or finest level of information we need or we just need the information kind of different entity type and kind of different uh, types of error we can get in the debug log he just wanted to understand whether you are comfortable with that particular piece of thing or not okay and then the last question was uh, because these questions were almost theoretical and this requires you to explain a lot so there were less number of questions but all of such questions require heavy explanation so you need to explain a lot you need to convince them a lot with each and every answer last question was that they ask tell me the recent example in your project where you got a problem and then you solve the problem what was your approach what was the problem so depending on your project you can try to solve, try to give an example logical example where you actually solve the problem if it is not something then you have to go through um, animated problem and try to answer it in a step by step manner like why there was a problem why you feel that problem was difficult how did you identify the problem and what steps you took to resolve the problem try to answer it in a step wise manner and that will create maximum impression for you in the interviewer's mind and these were the question guys so that's all for this video i hope you will find these questions helpful feel free to talk to me on linkedin if you have any doubt related to any question and uh, i'll be more than happy to help you thank you everyone have a good day